Imagine massive waves of sand dunes stretching some 50 miles along Oregon's central coast between Coos Bay and Florence. Starting at the ocean's edge and extending from one half to two miles inland, these sand dunes rise and fall, with some towering as high as 500 feet towards the sky. It is the largest expanse of coastal sand dunes in North America. Even though these dunes have stood the test of time, they are now at risk of disappearing before our very eyes. Over millions of years, the Pacific Ocean's eternally grinding wave action created fine sand from the rocks and sediment that were carried downstream from the Cascades and coastal mountains. This sand is then deposited into the ocean. All that sand is blown inland by persistent coastal winds, creating dunes that shift and drift, form and reform with each new season. This ever-changing landscape created a dune ecosystem of plants and animals specially adapted to live here. Going back more than 8,000 years ago, Native Americans learned how to coexist with this challenging environment, making use of resources from the dunes to support their way of life, until European settlers arrived and changed the landscape. Rapid westward colonization in Oregon created demand for better roadway access to growing towns along the coast. The wind-driven sand and continuously shifting dunes encroached on roads, waterways, and buildings. Vegetation was planted to stabilize the dunes beginning in the early 1900s and greatly expanded in the 1930s as Highway 101 was constructed. European beach grass, scotch broom, gorse, and shore pine were all planted to stabilize drifting sand dunes. This dune stabilization program began with the best of intentions, but unfortunately has greatly disrupted the dune ecosystem. From studies conducted by the Forest Service and other researchers, we have learned how the coastal dunes ecosystem functions. For thousands of years, a constant supply of sand has blown inland, creating a large and unstable foredune closest to the ocean. This sand builds up until it eventually cascades down, blowing further inland, replenishing the sand and creating more dunes. Natural vegetation grows in some places, but can be easily buried and does not survive in the same location over multiple years. With the invasive grasses now in place, the blowing sand becomes trapped in the vegetated foredune, preventing loose sand from reaching the rest of the inland dunes. Over the past 80 years, this altered process has reshaped the dune ecosystem, allowing both native and invasive grasses, shrubs, and eventually trees to flourish. As these plants grow and shed organic matter, soil develops over the sand, and a forest takes root where there was once blowing sand. The open sand is cherished here for recreation, its beauty, and is critical for the plants and animals adapted for life here. Many diverse groups, from OHV riders to bird watchers and everyone in between, noticed that the dunes were disappearing. My first visit to Oregon Dunes was in 1957, and I fell in love with the Oregon Dunes immediately. We went out to South Jetty, and it was completely flat and open sand. There was no vegetation. And then I came back after I got out of the Navy in 1980, and it was like, what happened? It was all vegetation, the seawall was there, and so that's when I decided to get involved. They began to talk and work together to identify and address the problem. From these discussions, the Oregon Dunes Restoration Collaborative, or ODRC, was born. The organization's purpose is to grapple with the unintended consequences of the dune stabilization project and to coordinate efforts to bring back the natural dunes ecosystem. The Oregon dunes are just a unique, special place here on the Oregon coast. The community has come together to express their interest in preserving the Oregon dunes. And we're excited as the Forest Service to aid them in that effort. 
The Collaborative designed a three-pronged strategy to carry out this mission. First, we aim to preserve the most natural and intact sections of existing dunes. Second, we will identify and restore critically important affected areas to their natural conditions. And third, we seek to return the natural process of wind-driven sand dune formation by removing large swaths of invasive plants that now hold everything in place. These expansive restoration projects will be mainly led by the Sayusla National Forest and other land management organizations, but will require significant public support to have a meaningful impact. Restoring the dunes will be a long-term project, but individuals like you and I can help by teaming up with the ODRC to make regular excursions onto the dunes, removing invasive scotch broom and gorse. Together, we can keep the key sections of open sand free from these plants. Volunteers have worked every month or even more frequently over the last five years to remove thousands of invasive plants. If you're concerned about the Oregon dunes, please share our story. Tell your family, friends, and neighbors to let them know about this amazing landscape and how we all can help to restore it. In order to achieve our goals, you can also assist with financial donations. We always need funds to organize work teams, create and print educational material, and manage restoration projects. Whether you volunteer, share our story, or donate to the collaborative, your contribution is crucial in the struggle to restore and preserve Oregon's beloved coastal sand dunes. If you want to learn more about the Oregon Dunes Restoration Collaborative, visit our website at saveorgandunes.org. There, you can contact us to learn more and join today. Together. 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 We can save the Oregon Dunes. <laughs>